gathered together in the presence of God to witness and bless the joining together of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Almighty God established the bond and covenant of marriage in creation as a sign of the mystical union between Christ and his church. Our Lord Jesus Christ adorned this manner of life by his presence and first miracle at a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and it is commended by Holy Scripture to be held in honor among all people. The union of husband and wife and heart, body, and mind was ordained by God for the procreation of children and their nurture in the knowledge and love of the Lord, for mutual joy, and for help and comfort given one another in prosperity and adversity, to maintain purity so that husbands and wives with all the household of God might serve as holy and undefiled members of the body of Christ, and for the upbuilding of Christ's kingdom in family, church, and society, all to the praise of his holy name. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into <clears throat> advisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance for the purposes for which it was ordained by Almighty God. Into this holy union, Catherine Louise and Andrew MacDonald Aiken now come to be joined. If any of you here today can show just cause why they may not be married in accordance with God's word, speak now or else ever hold your peace. I invite you to be seated. I now require and charge you both in the name of God, from whom no secrets are hid, that if either of you know any impediment why you may not be married rightly, you do now confess it. Being assured that those who are joined contrary to God's word are not truly united in holy matrimony. Andy, first questions are for you. Will you have this woman to be your wife, to live together out of reverence for Christ and the covenant of holy matrimony? Will you love her, honor her, comfort and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. I will. Catherine, will you have this man to be your husband, to live together out of reverence for Christ and the covenant of holy matrimony? Will you honor him, love him, comfort him, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? Now, this is a question for all of you gathered here today. We know that we cannot do marriage alone. We need the kingdom of God's people around us, cheering us on and praying for us. So, will all of you here today, witnessing these promises, do all in your power to uphold this man and this woman in their marriage? We will. Who presents Catherine for holy matrimony? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and ever-living God, you have created us male and female in your image. Look with mercy upon this man and this woman who come to you seeking your blessing. Assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep the promises and vows they make. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now hear God's word. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to, com to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, 
And as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear, one, bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against brother, another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of the work, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body, and be thankful. Let gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trodden underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. The Gospel of our Lord. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Oh, Holy Spirit, we do indeed invite you here. Would you fill this place? Would you fill the lives of Andy and Catherine as they come before your altar today, Lord, to make vows one to the other, to love and serve one another the way that you have first shown us love in Christ Jesus? Lord, our minds are clouded. We cannot see the truth and the mighty power of your word unless your spirit instruct us. So, Father, today as we celebrate and rejoice, let us see you more clearly than we've ever seen you before. Let us understand more dearly what you have done for us. And as we witness that modeled yet again in the coming together of a man and a wife in holy matrimony. Lord, may all of this today be about you about your glory and your goodness. May every meditation of every heart in this place and every word out of my mouth be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For you are our only rock and our only redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it's not uncommon for couples to ask for specific readings from God's Word for their weddings. While there is a recommended list of readings that you can choose from from the Bible, sometimes a couple meets at a retreat and maybe what they want read on their wedding day is the key verse from that weekend away. Or maybe in their prayer life together, they've hit on something in Scripture that speaks specifically about how God has started something new in them, knitting their hearts together as one. And so when Andy and Catherine came to me and said, we want the first reading to be this reading from the prophet Isaiah, I thought, now, that's a passage that makes so much sense for this marriage. As I've come to know and grown to love Andy and Catherine, I've seen that what God is doing in them is the kind of thing that Isaiah is proclaiming today. The Spirit of the Lord is indeed on the two of you. He has anointed you. He has brought the two of you together to do it all the more powerfully as you go out into the world to serve together in the name of our God. I think that what Isaiah speaks about today is what the Achan family hopes to be all about bringing good news to the poor and the oppressed, announcing the favor and the love of the Lord to this broken and needy creation, giving to those who mourn the garland of praise instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of their tears. 
And now you two certainly look fantastic today in all of your wedding finery. And Catherine, that's the most audacious veil I think I've ever seen in my life. But what Isaiah is talking about here is how he has dressed your hearts in splendor. I mean, outside you two look great, but it's that inner beauty in the two of you that really shines forth for us today. As Isaiah puts it, God has dressed your souls in salvation. He's dressed you in robes of righteousness from the inside out. God is, as Shakespeare puts it in Henry V, the best maker of all marriages. And he has certainly brought together two formidable, bright, compassionate, and kind people. Not for your sake, but for the sake of the world. That you might shine forth the love of God to all around you. And if you're here today and you know Catherine and Andy, can we get an amen to that? Amen? Amen. amen. Now, our reading from Colossians does happen to be one of the recommended readings, but it's no less perfect for you two. And if you know Catherine and Andy, you know that they are both full of these gifts of the Holy Spirit that Paul talks about, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Andy, your whole life has been marked with that kind of love towards other. Somehow squeezed between obtaining way too many degrees, you've done tireless work in scouting and yeoman efforts to make young fraternity members at the University of Alabama seek the good things that God has for them rather than the reckless and fleeting things of the world. Good luck. And in your life, Andy, you've been about proclaiming the goodness of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Catherine, your life is similarly oriented towards service and love for others in the name of Jesus. And indeed, in the short time that you have served on the staff here at Christ Church, the mission going out from this church has doubled and even tripled. Under your leadership, Christ Church has become focused and organized both locally and internationally, and the whole church is joining in more and more in God's great rescue mission to creation. And even in your wedding plans, and there were a lot of them, and there was a lot of wrestling over all this, everything you wanted to do today was about love and forgiveness and forbearance. That's what you wanted this day to be about. Since Catherine's on staff here at Christ Church, we've been describing this wedding as our own royal wedding. Um, but if you happen to be here from the Church of the Ascension, this is a royal wedding for you as well. Andy is one of your own vestrymen. He's the leader in your congregation. And I don't want us to miss that we get to do something good and beautiful together today. Amen? Amen. Now, if you're here today and you've never seen an Anglican wedding, except if the real royals get married over in England, I, there's some things that happen in an Anglican um, wedding rite that speak to the love of Christ Jesus for the world. And I don't want us to let them fly by without marking them for the powerful witness that they are. In just a few minutes, um, Andy and Catherine are going to hold hands, and I'm going to take this stole from around my neck, and I'm going to tie it around their hands. That's where we get the phrase, tying the knot. And this stole is supposed to represent, among other things, that towel that Jesus tied around his waist when he washed the feet of his friends. So we wrap the hands of the couple getting married to remind them that your foremost duty is to serve one another the way that Christ has first served you. I mean, tying the knot is this really powerful, um, kind of jarring reminder that marriage is not a party. It's not a fuzzy, feel-good announcement of romantic love. It's not a pastime or a hobby or something you add to an already full life. It's not about getting what you need even though that is the way our culture views marriage, which is why our divorce rates are so high. You wrap the stole around your hands to remind you that marriage is a vocation. It's a calling. It's a calling to take a vow to one another that for the rest of your lives, you will wash one another's feet on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. And when you do that, you will tell the world 
how Christ loves the church. You will demonstrate to the world how the king reveres and honors and loves and serves his subjects. It's a radical moment in Christian marriage when the thing that binds the two of you together is the sign of how Christ the king serves you and makes you lovely, washes you, and makes you holy. So Andy and Catherine are also going to exchange rings, and we're going to put those rings on this finger. And do you know why we use that finger? Well, it's not because there's an artery running there or a chakra line or some hooey like that. It's because we get married in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These rings are not casual things that we wear around, even though there's one up here that says Alabama on it and is made out of some weird rubber substance. That's not the one I'm going to bring down, just so you know. We're just blessing them for, I think, Andy called it game day. So that'll be up there on the stack this morning. But those rings are a reminder that at the foundation of your marriage, Andy, at the foundation of your marriage, Catherine, is the perfect unity of the Trinity. It's the God who is one and three and who constantly pours himself out in love. He calls you, male and female, into perfect intimate relationship Because that's who God is. That self-giving love that you will demonstrate will tell the world that God is love. And you will be a living witness to that Trinitarian truth. And later, when Catherine and Andy will kiss, it's not a sign of romance or passion. They're simply doing what we all used to do at the peace. We pass the kiss of peace with one another. I suggest that you only kiss people with whom you're married or related out there in the congregation, but we used to all kiss one another to remember that Christ has brought us this radical peace that passes anything that the world could possibly understand. And that kiss reminds you that you are about to experience a peace that is so much greater than anything you've ever known before. And that peace that you have in Christ Jesus within your marriage is the only peace that makes a married life worth living. So there's a stole of service. There's a, a ring of Trinitarian remembrance. There's a kiss of peace and all of those. And there's many more. I don't have all day, although I warned them I might take all day. But these are, these are signs that the king has called the two of you together. The king who serves us in his son. The king who's bound himself to us through the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. And the king who's brought peace to the world and now has great plans for the two of you to show that peace abroad. Now, Andy and Catherine, you've told me how everything about your relationship has felt God-breathed and preordained. The king has indeed been faithful to the two of you, hasn't he? Andy, did you ever think back when you were a first grader at MA that there was a second grader, this older woman, that was going to come rob the cradle? I think that cougar is the word you used earlier this week, but (laughs) perhaps I misremember that. I'm not sure. And Catherine, did you ever think when you came back here from the big city um, that you would meet Andy and that he would take you to dinner in Auburn of all places, right? where nothing good happens in Lee County for an Alabama grad, right? And yet at that night at Acre, you realized that there was a calling. There was a vocation that maybe God had called the two of you to become one flesh for the life of the world. Our every prayer is that the two of you would find married life to be um, full of a richness and a challenge and a and a self-giving, and a winnowing, and some of those hard edges on our lives might be worn away by the holy sacrament of marriage. It is going to require you to find a place for 20 duck decoys, because Andy says he can't live without them. But if that's all that it takes to put the two of you together, we're praying that what we see in the two of you, in good and bad times, is new life, new joy, and new hope. In Christ Jesus. Our prayer is that God, the best maker of marriage, would take Andy and Catherine and Danny and Emily and that that house might become a home to his glory. Amen? Amen. Now listen, we've said a lot of nice things about the two of you this morning and we're all here to cheer you on, but 
it's also worth noting that marriage is hard, right? That you two are wonderful, loving, joyous people, but marriage is sanctifying, and anything that sanctifies you and makes you holy can be painful. It can be a refining experience. Like Andy, I got married a little bit later in life, and I had no idea just how selfish and set in my ways I was until Mimi was around to remind me of it all the time. It's been wonderful, but it's been life-changing. Marriage is not all puppy dogs and ice cream. It has lots of moments where you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am not all that God has called me to be. Oh, Lord, change my heart. That's what you start today, is that kind of good life. Now, we want to give you a gift. So this is a cross that's been carved by one of our parishioners, and it looks just like the cross that hangs above the altar while you you're took your vows today. So I want you all to take it home and put it up on the wall. And whenever it gets hard, you look to that cross and remember what Christ Jesus was willing to do out of love for you, out of love for you, out of love for the world. And you remember that if Christ so loved us that he laid down his life for us, then we're called to self-sacrificial love one to the other. Well, we pray that you don't have to look at it all the time, but um, if you're married, it's probably a daily event. Um, But remember that that's the nature of the king, and that's the king that's brought you together to be, as our gospel reading calls us, to be salt and light in the world. But in your marriage, the beauty of Jesus is revealed in how you lay down your lives for one another. You choose one another rather than yourself day after day, year after year, and decade after decade. We love you two. We are proud of the two of you. And we cannot wait to see how you two and Danny and Emily become a family full of grace and truth and the power of the gospel. May we see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Amen? Amen. All right, the two of you will join me, and Will, if you'll join me as best man, let's get the two of you well married. Okay, the two of you will face one another. I'll give Emma a chance to do her bride helper duty. All right, Andy, again, you're always first. We're going to stick you to it so that then she has the freedom to receive these vows. In the name of God, in the name of God why don't you take her right hand in your right hand? We'll start that again. In the name of God, in the name of God I, Andy, I, Andy take, you, take you, Catherine, to be my wife, to, be my wife, to have and to hold, to have and to hold from, this day forward, from this day forward, for better or for worse, for, better, for, worse, for, richer, for, poorer, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until we are parted by death according to God's holy word. To God's holy word. This, is my solemn vow. this is my solemn vow. Okay, loose hands. And Catherine, if you'll take his right hand in your right hand and repeat after me. In the name of God, in the name of God I, Catherine, I, Catherine, take you, Andy, take you, Andy to, be my husband, to be my husband, to have and to hold, to have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for, worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, richer, for poorer in sickness and in health, in and in health to, love and to, to love and to cherish until we are parted by death, until we are parted by death according, to word, according to God's holy word. This is my solemn vow. Okay, you two can lose hands. Bless, O Lord, these rings to be a sign of the vows by which this man and this woman have bound themselves to each other through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Right. If you put it on her finger and repeat after me, Catherine, Catherine I, give you this ring I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, loose hands and put that on his finger and repeat after me. Andy, Andy I give you this ring, you this ring as, a as a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am and all that I have, all that I, have I, honor I honor you. In the name of the Father, the of the Father and of the Son, and of the, Son and, of the Holy Spirit. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right.
Let's tie the knot. Right hand and right hand. Now that Catherine and Andy have given themselves to each other by solemn vows with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. All God's people said, Amen. If the two of you would kneel and if the congregation would stand. giver of all life, author of salvation and giver of all grace, look with favor upon this man and this woman whom you make one flesh in holy matrimony and enable them to fulfill the vows they have made. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our grant them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their common life, that each may be to the other a partner in prayer, a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will and their spirits in your spirit, that they may grow in love and devotion to you and with one another all the days of their lives. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our give them courage when they hurt each other to recognize and acknowledge their faults, to seek your forgiveness, and to forgive and be reconciled to one another. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. May their union and holy matrimony be a model of Christ's love for his church and for the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. bestow upon them, if it be your will, the gift and heritage of children, and the grace to bring them up to know you, to love you, and to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Grant that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give them such fulfillment in their marriage that they may reach out in love and concern for others. And grant that all married persons who have witnessed these vows may find their lives strengthened and their loyalties confirmed. Lord, in your mercy. Grant these our prayers, O Father, who with your Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign in perfect unity, now and forever. Amen. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love in sending Jesus Christ to come among us, to be born of a human mother, and to make the way of the cross to be the way of life. We thank you also for consecrating the union of man and woman in his name. By the power of your Holy Spirit, Pour out the abundance of your blessing upon this man and this woman. Defend them from every enemy. Lead them into all peace. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle about their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows, in their life and in their death. Finally, in your mercy, bring them to that table where your saints feast forever and ever in your heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord, with mercy, look upon you with favor, fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may live faithfully together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. Please stand and face one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I give you the first kiss of peace, Dr. and Mrs. Andy Aiken. Please exchange peace with one another. Amen. Peace. peace. So happy for you.
Well, what a joyous day. It's such a good thing to come together and see people give themselves to one another, bind one another, themselves to one another in love. We're so glad you're here. If you're visiting among us, a very special welcome to you. Um, we just want you to feel at home here, especially if you're here from Ascension. I just want you to know that you're welcome. We're just delighted that we have this opportunity to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth around this wonderful sacrament of holy matrimony. So Catherine and Andy want the first food they eat as a married couple to be the body and blood of Christ Jesus. So in just a few moments, we're going to receive communion. And you do not have to be an Anglican to receive here. You don't have to be a member of Christ Church. You just have to be a baptized Christian. The ushers will lead you forward. We fill the rail from the center to the edge. You simply kneel down, put your hands out like this. We'll place bread in your hand. You can eat the bread and then drink from the cup. Or you can leave the bread in your hand. We'll take it from you, dip it in the wine, and then place it on your tongue. That just keeps you from sticking your fingers in the wine because you can't see the surface of it, and we can. You're also welcome to come forward and not receive communion. Just cross your arms over your chest like this, and that tells us you want a blessing rather than communion. Immediately following the service, we invite you to head over to Canterbury Hall, where we'll have a celebratory glass of champagne and a piece of cake uh, when Andy and Catherine show up over there to cut their cake in our presence. Again, we're so glad you're here. We pray that God would be a witness to us of his call on our lives to show the world his goodness and his love. And praise the Lord that y'all are married and now get to come to God's table and thank him for yet another one of the many gifts with which he's blessed us in this life. Amen. Please stand for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, it is a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the love of wife and husband, you have given us an image of the heavenly Jerusalem. Adorned as a bride for her bridegroom, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
who loves her and gave himself for her that he might make her whole and the creation new. Therefore, we praise you. We join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. If I can invite the couple to come, kneel and all of you to kneel as we continue in prayer. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all of your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and your daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! We do not presume to come to this short table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, 
so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, these are the gifts of God that have been given for the people of God.
invite the couple to come forward to kneel, and the rest of the congregation, please kneel for prayer. <laughs> that way is blocked. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all that is true and lovely and gracious, we give you thanks for binding us together in these holy mysteries of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that by your Holy Spirit, Catherine and Andy, now joined in holy matrimony, may become one in heart and soul, live in fidelity and peace, and obtain those eternal joys prepared for all who love you. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.